So are there really legitimate COVID super dodgers? No one really knows for sure. Doctors still say your best chance at avoiding serious or even fatal symptoms from COVID is to get vaccinated. But Dr. Lode and Dr. Graham both say the likelihood of someone always dodging COVID is slim. The Sheriff's Department says that trap door was next to the steering wheel made to look like an airbag compartment. And it is still here. You can take a look at this gross mess here around me. Trash piling up, overflowing out of these dumpsters and all around these apartment buildings. I suppose to a woman who was standing in this backyard actually playing on this swing set with her young daughter when that plane crashed about 50 feet away from them in her neighbor's backyard. You can see they still have this area blocked off. Patrick, I'll step out of the way so you can take a look. We're at 19th and Olive and we're on the sidewalk right outside of the high school. This is where police say that shooting happened earlier tonight. Driving from Milwaukee to Camp Douglas would typically take about two hours. The Black Hawk helicopter minutes. Probably about half a car left here, Patrick, and you can see here behind me just how crushed this tree left it next to it. Neighbors say the old tree fell at about 1230 this morning. In this case, the rain is going to be light enough. It is not going to wash away the salt. So as crews here behind me get ready to go out for the evening, anyone watching at home can also get their sidewalks and driveways ready as well. And we have seen bad sidewalks all over the city like this one here, just complete sheets of ice. Uh, and a lot of people now in their neighborhoods trying to fight against that ice that has accumulated. Well, it was the rain Friday night into Saturday morning that really loosened the soil. That, coupled with the strong wind gusts around our viewing area, helped bring down a lot of these trees we're seeing. And here in Shorewood, at least a thousand people gathering outside Three Lion Pub, blocking off the entire street for a block party watching the World Cup. <laughs> Standing inside the Rockwell Allen Bradley clock tower, you can actually see the motor the clock runs on and the gears that change the clock hands. And it's going to mean everything electric in your home is going to start costing you more starting next month. Even though RSV is a viral infection, a lot of times kids that get RSV also get bacterial infections like ear infections or pneumonia, which requires doctors to then prescribe amoxicillin as a secondary treatment. Under the new agreement, the Mahoney's have until January 2023 to literally pick up their house and move it from here to this empty lot about five miles away. Republicans didn't see that red wave like yeah. they were predicting. Why do you think that is, and what kind of lessons do you think Republican leadership should be taken away from that? Yeah, I think we're going to have to do a lot of soul searching and, you know, head scratching and, and, and looking through and parsing the numbers as to why we didn't perform as well as we would have liked to have. Why do you think it is? I mean, I think Trump's kind of a drag on our ticket. This is the interesting part of the night, Patrick. They're done counting the votes, they're done counting the ballots, but they still have to finalize the whole process. So you can see here, we're down to the wire here, one of the final tables inside the Wisconsin. Center, which is Milwaukee Central count this year. Baskin says she thinks it's because of her minivan's child lock that the thieves didn't get in the back seat immediately and then didn't realize her young son was sitting back there until he started to cry. Like this Facebook group called Brendan Talks, supporters getting as many people as possible to send the governor letters like these postcards. I wish I would have known or I wish I would have done more research. I don't know where my furniture is. <laughs> I feel stupid. I feel like this is all my fault for believing this guy. 12 News talked to dozens of customers calling themselves victims of Cream City Restoration, some cross country. He picked up a minimum of $6,000 worth of furniture. He sent me a $1,200 deposit. A couple months later, he asked for the deposit back, and I've never heard from him since. Many from Milwaukee. They cost $2,500 for the pair. And you paid for those back in November, and you still haven't gotten them. Correct. It's already, like, starting to pull apart, like, all of this fabric. Many of them said they were attracted to the lofty storefront in the Third Ward, now empty. Their warehouse locked. 12 News investigated and found since 2020 at least three complaints lodged against Cream City Restoration with the State Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection, plus hundreds of pages of court documents filed and small claims. I feel like they are playing a shell game and are deliberately scamming people. 
I want him in jail. After over a month of calls and emails and speaking with their bankruptcy attorney in an exclusive interview with 12 News, Jason and Kelsey McGinnis, owners of Cream City Restoration, addressed the many allegations against them. With COVID, over the last two years, we've lost really key employees, um, you know, and so that really hurt our business. Incoming orders, few employees, and a small family at home, the couple says the situation snowballed, becoming too much to handle. Some of these folks are saying that they were trying to get a hold of you for years like what a year or two. We never did this intentionally, you know, that we're sorry that this happened. And again, we're doing everything we can to make amends with everybody and liquidate our assets to take care of people. The McGinnis is say more than $14,000 in federal COVID relief funds they received barely covered their Water Street rent. The landlord of their warehouse on 38th Street, where hundreds of furniture items still sit, tells 12 News they owe him more than $40,000. Why keep going when you're so overwhelmed? You can't handle what you already have. We legit thought it was a viable option. You know, we... We thought that, you know, we were going to come out of it. Now bankrupt, no business, evicted, and they say receiving threats. The McGinnises tell 12 News they never meant any harm. We've, you know, just trying to truly just like provide for our family and um, make a difference in our community. And obviously, like, we got overwhelmed. As for the McGinnises, I asked them what they learned from this, if anything at all. They told me they never want to own another business again. Reporting in the Third Ward, I'm Caroline Reinwald, WYSN 12 News. Inside the Oshkosh Correctional Institution. I was sentenced on a 20-year sentence. Got about 12 more years to go. Jafari Mahoney, locked up for dealing heroin, and Aaron Smith, 15 years into an armed robbery sentence. I was 18, made a bunch of really bad decisions. Both of them turning their time in prison into a path of redemption. Being able to give something back to the community that we all took from. They're training dogs that will help people, including victims of crime. April, let's go. Mahoney and Smith are part of a small group of inmates in the Journey Together service dog program. Hurry. Training pups in prison to eventually become PTSD therapy dogs, like Sergeant Pepper. After graduating from the Journey program, Pepper now works with crime victims in Waukesha County. The district attorney's office recently showed off Pepper after the Daryl Brooks trial as part of the team that helped survivors of the Christmas parade attack during the court proceedings. This is our opportunity to give back to the community, maybe for mistakes that we made. As the dogs work to give people a chance to live normally, the program works to give inmates a second chance at life. Good job, April, good job. How do you survive in a prison? You do what you're told, exactly what you're told, no more, no less. And we've absolutely broached that in, in a huge way really? within this program. Sit. Showing them how to communicate with uh -huh, staff sit. and work together. Good boy. You got a dog Stand. to take care of, you got another being to take care of. And I mean, you got to kind of put yourself aside, different things that you might be dealing with and focus on them and their well-being. Training the dogs <laughs> and fine-tuning their focus. All of the dogs have to learn about 80 commands. Willie here right now is doing the latter command. Once they learn these commands, which takes about two years, they can graduate from the program and they're either placed with a facility or a PTSD client. For inmates like Mahoney, this program gives him a higher purpose. Bang. We get up in the morning, we're we with them all day, you know, I mean, it's almost like they're our children. Preparing each inmate for a future outside these walls. Are you interested in working with animals when you work? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah? What do you want to do? A mixture of training and grooming. Hoping to eventually become valued members of society. We're teaching them, but they're helping us also. In Oshkosh, Caroline Reinwald, WYSN 12 News. Eric Teagues is back in school, walking to class a bit slower, though on both legs. It's been great. It feels great to be up and moving again. This angle's locked. An incredible sight, given the fact he nearly died just over two months ago. What do you focus mostly on right now? Trying to get back to baseball and just school. November 21st, Eric was one of many victims in the Waukesha Christmas Parade attack. Playing trombone with the Waukesha South High School marching band, Eric, on the far left side, was one of the first students struck from behind when a driver drove through the parade in an SUV. Like getting like, like this, like a scraping noise, like of getting like, I guess like when I was under the car. I remember someone grabbing like my head and like tilting me up. And then I remember seeing like the sky. 
Six people died, more than 60 others were injured. Of the Waukesha South marching band members who were struck, Eric suffered the most severe physical injuries. Broken ribs, a broken leg, crushed shoulder, and a C4 spinal fracture, to name some. Although his injuries easily could have killed or paralyzed him, a week and a half after the crash, <laughs> Eric was welcomed home. You always have that little bug in your ear, that sight of is everything going to be okay? Could something happen where I never had that before? Realizing that, you know, in an instance that you don't expect, you could lose someone or they may not be there anymore. In addition to band and keeping up a 4.0 GPA, Eric is an athlete. He wants to get back to 100%. Twice a week at Children's Wisconsin Greenfield Clinic, Eric works to build back his range of motion and strength. We have him doing things called a slide board where he's almost like ice skating. He's doing lunges, he's doing leg press machine. Amazingly enough. I asked him what your goal was and he said baseball to the end of March. I'm like, we're gonna get there. He's already getting back in the swing of what he loves. Eric, a junior, is driven by a dream to one day play college ball and is back to practicing weekly now at Sticks Baseball Academy. It was like a big change and they can, it, it kind of like showed me that I could do a lot more than I really think, and like that could push through like hard times. Fielding what comes his way, one day at a time. You just got to think about that one goal and like really wanting it, and even if it's hard, to keep trying to push through it. In Waukesha, Caroline Reinwald, WISN 12 News. This is what makes that story so special. His son, who has sickle cell anemia, was being honored at the game that night, was watching from the sidelines as his father made that $10,000 shot. This is the moment. Plenty of time on the clock. Let's go, let's go. Come on, give him some encouragement. Come on now. Ah! Jermel Scott Sr. won 10 grand Monday night. Sinking the Potawatomi Hotel and Casino jackpot shot before a sellout crowd of more than 17,000 fans. Ah! And once I kneeled down and looked, I say, oh yeah, it's going in. Before that, the Milwaukee father of three remembers beaming at the Pfizer Forum Jumbotron as it featured his seven-year-old son. Jermel Jr. has sickle cell anemia, and on this night, the MAC Fund, Midwest Athletes Against Childhood Cancer, honored him as their star of the year. It was a night for him. Um, one of the Buck staff asked if I wanted to go for the jackpot shot, and I said, sure, why not? Sign me up. Scott, who played in high school but hasn't picked up a basketball since 2015, says he fell right back into the rhythm, firing off a layup, free throw, and three-pointer before landing the money shot all in front of his son. I was just thinking, like, if it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be here doing this right now. <laughs> so, yeah, he's going to get a, he's going to have a nice Christmas. He must have been going nuts. Yeah, he was. I seen the recording. And he was just rooting on, like, hey, daddy, daddy made it, daddy made it. Quickly becoming dad of the year, banking $10,000 with nothing but net.